Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching CVVNet's video series on lead code concurrency topic and this video is going to be the third video of that series. And yeah, I mean I wanted to tell this in the first and second video that if you have not watched mutex condition variable topic from my channel then I think you should go ahead and watch those videos first because then you will have so much idea about this. So the question is, as you can see, I mean you can pause the video and try to understand like what the question is or I'll take you through that. So the entire question is you have this zero even odd class and these three member functions zero even and odd so thread a will call zero thread b will call even and thread c will call odd and what is expected is if they give you some number like when you are going to construct the object of the zero even odd class they will send some number let's say if that number is six then they want the output like this zero one zero two zero three till 06 if that number is 2 then they out they expect the output like 0102 and the catch is 0 function is only responsible for printing zeros and even is only responsible for printing even numbers and similarly goes for odd odd is only responsible for printing odd numbers so let me take you to this notepad here t1 will call 0 function and t2 will call even function and t three will call odd function. So these three threads will call these three functions. So basically these three functions become three threads. They all will have same object in common. So if your object was constructed given n is equal to two, then the expected output is zero one zero two. If it was three, then the expected output is zero three. And this zero is printed by T1. This is printed by odd number T3. This is again printed by T1. This is T2. This is T1. This is T3. Because this is odd zero. Zero is always printed by zero function. And as these functions are treated as thread, we don't have any control over function call sequence. So let's say T3 t2 and t1 is the sequence so first t3 is called but t3 is only responsible for calling i mean printing odd numbers but first we want zero so now here comes the logic you have to tell that okay t3 wait it's not your job i mean it's not your time just wait for some time and then t2 will try to do the printing t2 can only print even but we are expecting zero for now then t2 will also go and wait and t3 will come uh, sorry t1 will come and t1 will see okay is this my job i mean is this my turn yes then it will print zero now t1 will have to tell all the threads t2 and t3 that i am done let's see if it's your turn so after printing zero let's suppose t0 is printed now using t1 now t1 and t i mean t1 is notifying to all the threads t2 and t3 and saying that okay please check if it is your turn or what then T2 and T3 both will wake up and they have to check one variable which is obviously set by T1 only because T1 knows whose turn it is. So T1 will set some variable which will tell okay it's T3's time or T2's time and then let's suppose if it is T3's time because we are supposed to print one here then T3 will start printing and T1 and T2 both will go for sleeping. Now T3 is done printing 1, T3 will tell to T2 and T3, sorry T1 both. Now guys wake up, just check if it is your turn. But before doing that, T3 will have to set whose turn the next is. So like this it will go. Let's see the code and we'll understand better. See, this is the constructor, they will pass n in the constructor itself. And I told you right single same object is accessible in all the threads okay we don't have to share anything across threads it's just that when you are going to modify something which is shared you have to have lock so yeah so we'll need these things one is condition variable so that we can have a conditional weight and for that you need mutex and this is like whose turn it is maybe zero's turn first turn second turn so so as I told you, T3 came first. Let me undo this a bit. Okay, let's see. T3 came first. T3, where is T3? And yeah, what is T3? T3 is supposed to call odd function. It will call odd. Let's see what odd is doing. It called odd. And yeah, all the functions are calling 
with one parameter print number this is a, a function pointer and we have to send our number what number we want to print in that function then only it will get printed you don't have to print the number they will do that job so odd is called because t3 is reaching first let's say because someone has to come first and someone has to come second and someone has to come third right so let's say we are taking the best bad example to go this whole thing wrong okay so t3 came first now here's the catch as t3 is odd number and if you happen to give n is equal to 3 then this is what you want to print so let's see how many zeros will come 0 0 and 0 so similar n is equal to 3 times zeros will get printed let's see how many odd will come this and this and how how many even will come only one so for odd you need n plus 1 divided by 2 so you will go from 1 to n plus 1 divided by 2 times and whereas for even you will go for n divided by 2 times only i mean from 1 to n divided by 2 times and for for 0 you will go for n times in the loop so let's go back so as this is odd we will be going from 1 to n plus 1 divided by 2 times so that will print correct numbers and then we don't have to wait or do anything we'll just come out from this function so let's say n is 3 3 plus 1 4 4 divided by 2 2 so this is correct now here comes the actual point condition variable will check if it is my turn or not so it will check am i supposed to wait and the condition is the turn is equal to equal to 1 no initially when the constructor was called turn was set to 0 because we have to tell which thread will go first then only synchronization will start because you will always have to start in correct order and then threads will take care of the rest of the things so you have to tell which one will start so this we are telling turn is zero meaning this guy but as we have taken a bad example of the whole thing possibly can go wrong now this will return false because it is not correct if this is return false here this t3 will stop here and sleep it will sleep here on this particular condition variable now t2's job t2 will come and try to do the same thing is this my job i mean is this my turn no it is not then t2 will also sleep t2 is also sleep t1 comes t1 is this guy it will check all the conditions it will check if this is my turn yes it is my turn then it will not wait it will go ahead and print zero and now we have to decide whose turn it is so if it is x i mean x is already odd then we'll make it even if it is even then we'll make it odd so this is that condition and now we will say all the threads waiting for this particular condition variable wake up and check if it is your turn and before doing this you have to set the turn then only you ask them to wake up because if you'll ask them to wake up and then turn this then it's going to mess up like anything so in our case x is in equal is equal to zero initially so zero and one is zero in that case it will set odd now it's odd function turn will come here it will check i mean anyway it was waiting you remember so this is t3 t3 was waiting for this and it will wake up and check because we send notify all all the threads will wake up so even will also wake up and odd will also wake up but this time odd will check is this my turn yes it is my turn it will go and print this x plus plus so now it will print one and now we'll set turn is equal to zero because after every even or odd printing you have to print zero so this will also say zero and see even in even function also you have to write zero because after printing even numbers you have to go back to the zero function call so after setting this you will say notify all now as you have said turn is equal to zero this will also get notified but it won't go ahead because the condition will be false again zero will wake up and start printing this time it is one one and percent one is one meaning true then it will become true sorry two so now it's two's turn so this will wake up so like this you will keep on synchronization zing and complete the job so if i will submit this i have submitted this many times i know so this is fine and let's see the acceptance acceptance is this guy we are studying on the top here so it ran in like no milliseconds okay cool right so this is the best you can get from any program <laughs> it beats almost every 
guy who has submitted this code. Okay, so point is, this is working code and let me know if you have any doubt. So I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye, take care. And yeah, keep learning, man.